Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like founders of P90X, Baby Einstein, Atari, many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, we have Steve Cypress again, who's a successful entrepreneur, top direct response marketer, who has built nearly a dozen successful companies including simulated sports services, winner's circle promotions, and many more. He prefers the vicarious thrill of coaching many businesses. Last time, he was too good, so I had to bring him back. He shared direct response strategies used building his company simulated sports services, the wow strategy, which helps businesses increase sales and marketing. Steve, thanks for joining me. Pleasure to be here. I promise I won't be as good this time, so you won't have to bring me back. (laughs) Uh, I looked out my window on the Y2K year 2000 New Year's at the fireworks I was in a hotel in Scranton Pennsylvania 40 years old not married no kids no family not even a home I'm traveling around six weeks here a month here six months there troubleshooting and I'm like what am I doing what am I doing here this is good for a kid but I can't be doing 40 years old and I'm in Scranton Pennsylvania in a hotel watching the fireworks with no family and life is passing me by mm-hmm. and I pretty much just walked out right on the spot I mean I went into the manager after that uh, Christmas New Year's break kind of thing and I was like you know I just gotta go and I left what I was building the managers I was training and I just uh, took off and went to the next chapter of my career but uh, one thing I found out later when I started I learned that there, there was this such a thing as direct response marketing and once again here I've been doing it. Yeah. I've been doing direct marketing, right? Take something and do you want it or not? And the deadline is I'm leaving in two minutes out mm-hmm. the door. Like there was an offer, there was a deadline, it was the whole wow strategy right there. So I would walk in if I had like uh, kids books. We did a lot of promotions for like Walt Disney books. So I would walk in back then, it was the Lion King, the Little Mermaid back in the 90s and I'd walk in and go, you have any niece, nephews, kids? No. You know, if I so we did promotions for sports teams. We had tickets to the Hartford Whalers when I was in in Connecticut, the New York Yankees in New York. It's like, any hockey fans around? Yes, no. I mean, it was the Wow Striders about the who. And if there wasn't a hockey fan in the office, I'm not going to sit there and go, I got a great deal on hockey tickets. What a waste of time. Right. So I'm like, you know, I'm wearing a Hartford Whalers hat and a suit, but I'm walking in going, hey, I've got a great deal from the Hartford Whalers. Any hockey fans? And the receptionist would go, Mike on the second floor, third cubicle, go see him. Great. I walk up there, Mike, you know, Mary down there says you're a hockey fan. I got four tickets, uh, buy one, get one free, or, four, or 20 tickets for 10 bucks, or whatever the heck it was, boom, irresistible offer. And that was the way I got it to him, by going right up and talking to somebody and then go to the next door. So that was great training. And, of course, I did learn how to run businesses and learn how to start new locations and train people and train managers. Great training, but I'd had enough. And that was time for the next chapter of my career. Later on, I was saying when I learned this, this thing about direct response marketing, I read that all the top people in direct response marketing will say the same thing. They'll say, the very best experience to become a great direct response marketer is that you at some point did door-to-door sales. Yeah. Well, at that point, I was like, hey, check it out. So those nine years really were <laughs> beneficial because, you know, I've met many people along the way that like, see, so for one summer I sold Cutco knives when I was a kid and that, there you go, I did that door-to-door sales or, you know, I did, I did uh, home alarms in homes for a month or whatever and I'm like, nine years, nine years. So, so Steve, what were the big, I want to hear all about... kinds of people, all kinds of situations, the ver- I, I wish it on everybody, the very best training for direct marketing for direct response marketing is to yeah. go out and get to know people and go sell toe to toe, nose to nose, face to face, not yeah. put up a website and wonder what to put and hope people come and you never have to see people. It's just not how it works. So what's been some of your proudest moments um, oh, you know, with clients and coaching? My proudest moment is, is and, and maybe it's to my detriment, but my proudest moments are always when I help somebody else. Yeah. You mentioned in the introduction when you said this vicarious thrill. Uh, you know, it might not be the smartest thing, but uh, that's just the way I am. And and I think that comes from my mom being a school teacher. Like, I just love to see someone else's success. So, I, for instance, I will never forget the first manager that I promoted in my door-to-door sales days way back after I was in the field. By the way, it was supposed to be a three- to six-month training period that took me 13 months. That's how bad I was. And so, uh, but then I had my own location. And now I did the same thing. I placed the ads. I trained the people. And when I promoted my first promotion to running her own location and giving her the keys, that is that still to this day is the most exciting thing. Uh, that because it was one thing for me to do it, but 
to help her go through the ups and downs, and she was married, and her husband was always barking at her, what are you doing, this is crazy, and being a woman was extra tough doing the door-to-door -door sales, and, and no respect from the guys in the office, and the people in the field, and, the, and, and that was a big thrill for me to help somebody else go from answering that ad to getting their own business. Yeah. And so now, that's what I do now in my consulting business, watching somebody who came to me struggling, wondering what to do, giving them some strategies and concepts and watching them and helping them along the way to implement it and then they have massive success that I love more than anything yeah. that's my favorite thing yeah Steve so what's one of your favorite success stories from consulting the small businesses um did I mention this one I know last I don't remember which ones because I you know I'll tend to tell the same story I guess maybe it's like you know comedian will tell the same jokes over and over but I'll tell the same stories Did I tell the one about the the, the group of lawyers that were doing the uh, IRS. Is that emergency. tax defenders? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, t talk about that. Go into the detail because you, you mentioned briefly about it, but t you know, tell me what you did with them and what worked. So I didn't think I used their name because they're still around today. Oh. But um, this was one I had gone to. I don't remember the exact timing, but it was pretty much right after the collapse of the 9-11 the and the whole stock market thing collapsed. Mm. I think I... I answered an ad and they said, you know, we're getting, the ad said too many leads. I said, we have too many leads coming in. We can't close them into sales. We need someone who can close them into sales. I'm like, I know I can do that. So let's go in there. And I helped, this business was, a, 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 you know, a part-time attorney and one part-time, one salesperson who was really, she was someone they knew who had been in HR. So they thought she's good with people. She'll do the sales. She was terrible at the sales. The attorney couldn't do the sales either. And I came in and I put together a whole sales process in place, a whole script, if you will, put the whole thing together. And then I started hiring and training other salespeople and built a team. And I got the thing up to, I think we had, uh, I was there for nine months and we went from that one part-time employee to 17 full-time employees, was bringing in, you know, a million dollars. I forget what it was bringing in, but it also retired the, the part-time attorney, now became full-time inside the company, which mm. was his dream. He went from, you know, just working nights in this thing and trying to get it going to he could leave a six-figure, you know, thing at a big law firm in Chicago and come over and do this and had other people working, helping, and then all the people were helping with their IRS problems, many of which, most of which were small business owners. Because I don't know if you or any other small business out there that are watching, but a lot of us get in trouble with uh, the withholding is the biggest thing the IRS gets small business owners in trouble with. If they're having trouble in their business, they might kind of dip into that fund for the from the withholding of people's paychecks. IRS, worst thing. They do not like that. It's not even like paying your taxes. This is stealing from the IRS. You withheld the IRS's money from their paycheck, and you've got to give it back to the IRS every quarter. And if you don't, they yeah. really come down harder. So. Yeah. We were, we were helping a lot of small business owners, which is my wheel. I just love doing it. And so uh, that's what I did with, the, with this, uh, this company, which at one point I learned a, a big lesson here is where the guy who was uh, doing the marketing and getting the leads, at, once I got the hang of this sales thing and I had it down, it took a few weeks of you know stumbling and bumbling and I, I landed, this is what I'm going to say and do. Uh, he said, you know, can I sit next to you for a couple of days? I'm just taking notes and listen to everything you say. We're recording the calls, and I was like, "Yeah, sure, we'll see. you know, have a few, have a blast." What is this exciting? This is you know, it is to me. It's interesting. Well, what he did, he he told me later. He said, "That's how I wrote our new sales letter. I just mm. took what you were saying, and it took a bunch of calls to get through all the objections and all the different situations. So it ends up being a you know a twenty page sales letter from each one hour from one." one hour calls all put together and to this day last I heard from them less than a year ago they're still I can't imagine they're not they're still using that letter wow. that they've now used for 15 14 years and uh, actually uh, when I, I caught up with him uh, he met had me come down and meet him in his office they got a beautiful downtown office I mean we were in a, a really pit location and it, they have a beautiful office big boardroom in this and I'm like Look at this place, whatever. So, how fantastic is that? The the full time jobs and the lives we've helped, and all of the clients yeah. they helped, and and the dream that I helped those attorneys. They had that dream of building that business. So, I just love stuff like that, and it's yeah. because they they did direct response marketing, did the right things, and and that was the first time that uh, that was Joe. The first time that he said to me, uh, you know, door to door sales experience. Dan Kennedy says it's the number one thing you look for in a salesperson mm. or in a copywriter. And uh, you got nine years, and uh, where you been my whole life? Right. 
And uh, I was like, wow, that was the first time I'd ever heard somebody say anything positive about the nine years door to door. I certainly didn't hear it from my family. It's not certainly not like I went home to Thanksgiving dinner and my mom was all proud of like, there's my son with the law degree. Yeah, he's peddling crap on the street for five bucks. Like it wasn't, they weren't too happy with that. But here was somebody going, hey. That's hey, a brutal wow. Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, it is what it is. Yeah. You know, it is what it is. Well, you know, and I was running locations at that point. So, you know, but yeah, my whole family is there. They're business owners or a doctor or a lawyer, or whatever. And I, you know, I just picture my poor mom, uh, go, you know, having a, you know, what's your son doing? Well, he's he's walking around in the rain today, trying to sell calculators for five bucks and having three hundred doors slammed on his face. How's your kid doing? Like, you know, not the greatest thing, but uh, my <laughs> the great thing about my mom was she always said, you know, you do what you want to do, right. and I know you'll be great at it, and yeah. I'll support you whatever you do. Now, yeah. like I said, that kind of came back to haunt her because uh, there I was with a law degree and having run a multi-million dollar business, and there I was on the street doing door-to-door -door sales. And my dad, who was a top salesperson, business owner, his whole life. And when I told him what I was doing, I described the opportunity, of course. Man, check this out. I'm going to start doing this, but in three to six months, I'm going to be running and making a six-figure income and running a multi-million dollar business. And uh, after all that, he was like, yeah, but you're, you're doing door-to-door -door sales on the street. I was like, yeah, but it leads to this, and these people are great, and I trust them. And I, believe, and I, I never forget, he said to me, uh, but isn't that just a hustle for kids? I was like, yeah, it is. I was 31 years old at the time. Because, uh, like I said, it was nice. Did nine years, and I was forty. And so, what am I doing? But I was, I was thirty-one years old, and uh, yeah, my assistant manager that trained me was twenty-one. I called him the twenty-one-year-old snot-nosed kid. I still do, today, and he's, uh, he's still with that company, and and oversees like forty locations or whatever, mm -hmm. and is very successful. But uh, you know, I was one of the oldest people in the office, and uh, yeah, it was a hustle for kids. And I said, yeah, but you know what? I'm going to do it too. And so, kind of like Robert Redford, another person that looks just like me, Robert Redford in The Natural, like, you know, the old man coming to play baseball and being a rookie. Like, or there was another movie, The Rookie, The Old Man. I, that was kind of me, yeah. It was, isn't that just a hustle for kids, was my dad. Yeah. And my mom, just not understanding at all, and going, well, I, I guess it's coming back to haunt me that 30 years ago, I told this kid, whatever you do, I'll support you. So, you know, here he is with this. <laughs> and, uh, I, so, I, until I met a, a direct response marketer, Never had somebody go, wow, nine years door-to-door -door sales experience. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, that's kind of a nice rush. I mean, yeah. uh, I certainly didn't get that when I was knocking on those doors. Steve, I have one last question. I appreciate your time. Before I ask it, where can we point people towards to find out more about you, to check out uh, all your, your great stuff? Oh, I appreciate that. I mean, I can go to my site. It's just my name, stevecypress.com. I don't know if you put it up there on the screen or below somewhere. I will put it's it up there, yeah. S I P R E S S, or they can go to thewowstrategy.com. Yeah, I'll put it up there. My last question is I know you mentioned one of your, you know, the mentors that influenced you is Bill Glazer. And I was wondering what was a big lesson you learned from, from Bill? Yeah. The greatest thing I learned from Bill was Bill is a third generation retail store owner. His grandfather started a retail store and then his father took it over and then he did. So I can only imagine that almost from birth, he was in that store all the time. Right. He was sweeping floors. He was helping with inventory. He was putting price tags on things. You know, So he was working seven days a week, 20 hour day. I mean, that's what Rita, come on, that's what we do. And then he found this direct response marketing and he started using it in his retail store. But then eventually he took that under the, the suggestion of Dan Kennedy, his and my mentor. And Dan said, your stuff is so good. You ought to sell it to other menswear store owners. And then he started selling it to other general retailers. And then he became Dan's partner and started teaching all of us business owners of all kinds. So here, here's someone who came from the hard work and, and, and running a business, really right there down and dirty, to helping a lot of people. And he did it by, by getting good at something and then teaching others what you do. So what, what I really can't stand is a whole ivory tower of people teaching things that they've never done themselves yeah. or they aren't fantastic at. So, you know, we mentioned I went to law school and we used to say in law school uh, when we had our, our class in corporate law, for instance, the guy was teaching corporate law and he was making, now this is the 80s, he was making 40, 50, 60,000 a year, whatever. Corporate lawyers are making three, 400,000. Now they make a million. But back then they were making a few hundred thousand. We're like, 
So this guy, by definition, could not have been a good corporate lawyer. He wouldn't be here. And yeah. in fact, there was that. I didn't care that much, but people would say stuff like, "Oh, I looked him up. You know, he couldn't get a job at the top firms, or he whatever. He's not, you know." And that's how, kind of how it is through school. It's like people are teaching that don't know what they're talking about. Right now, I'm sorry, I'm not a, a political guy, but we have a guy, a president, running a company who has never run a business. He never really run any. So he, so it's no wonder the economy. He has no idea what to do with the economy. Now, on the other hand, we have like now it's an election campaign, so you have someone like Donald Trump or Carly Fiorina go, "Well, I know how to run a business." Well, who knows what they would do with with you know nominating Supreme Court justices, <laughs> like arrest in the streets or, or foreign countries. Or, so you know, is the presidency like mm -hmm. too big for one person? But anyway, I mean, it, it's terrible to watch mm -hmm. politicians. Sir, I'm here in Chicago; it's the same thing. They're running the city and they're running it into the ground. And they're, they're, and, and colleges are filled with professors that are teaching kids that are going to go out in the real world and don't know how to run a business and build a business and be successful in the real world. And so I, I just can't stand all that stuff. Right. So one thing I love about Bill is he came from being a, a member, of, of uh, a student of Dan Kennedy, just like me. Then he became Dan Kennedy's partner. Well, how cool is that? Yeah. So that's to me. That is there's the 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 goal. To me also, I love that as a mentor. I love that. I love for someone who and I've done that with a couple of my clients. They've come to me as a member of my group, and then they become a member of my advanced coaching group, and then maybe a private client. And then I've partnered with them in a business. Now they've reached a level where we can partner together in a business. So Bill did that with Dan Kennedy, and I was like, that's the way to do it. Get really good at something, teach lots of other people, partner with your mentor. So you're not your mentor, Dan Kennedy, just didn't get anyone off the street and go be my partner. He took a student who had done so well as a student. He said, "Now you can be my partner," and I love that. And I think uh, a lot. I, I I speak for a lot of the the members of that company. It was called GKIC Glazer Kennedy, and uh, we really appreciated that Bill was one of us. Yeah. He was a member just like us who then became a partner with Dan Kennedy. How cool is that? When once Bill sold the company, corporate outside corporate entity bought it and brought in a president from the outside and a this and a that and it was like nobody had any respect I don't know nobody but a lot of us just lost total respect we're like they don't even know what they're not one of us how are they teaching us they've never used it they don't know what it is so I love the integrity of getting really good at something and then teaching it and not mm. teaching it out of a book or teaching it because you know you're a teacher you know you, you gotta you gotta be a doer and then people want to learn from that. I always want to learn from people that are yeah. successfully doing something. Was there any piece of advice Bill gave you that was valuable? Oh, probably so much. But, man, I'm trying to remember. Um, oh, I, I, I remember. It wasn't a piece of advice, but I remember having lunch with Bill once. And uh, we were having some kind of a discussion or whatever at the table. And he just looked over to me and goes, boy, you are competitive, aren't you? Why, like, why do you say that? Uh, what it, first of all, I am. So he was just being <laughs> perceptive. But whatever the conversation was, right. you know, he had at the time there there were like uh, ninety or so of these uh, GKIC advisors of us running chapters, like the one you came into when I was running one in Chicago and all over the country. And I wanted to be the top chapter, when, yeah. which I eventually had the largest chapter in the country. And uh, so it must have been some discussion about that and how, you know, I have a bigger chapter than this and I'm doing And, you know, and he's like, you know, but he just looked at me and said, boy, you are really competitive, aren't you? And, uh, and, it, and it wasn't, it, it was a nod of approval saying that. At the same time, he was kind of un, un, unwritten behind the scenes. He was also kind of saying, check that a little bit. Hmm. Like, watch that. Like, yeah. I'm having a conversation with people and I can't even talk to, if you were running the chapter in, you know, Omaha, I can't even talk civilly with you. I'm like, you know, what are you doing, man? You got to do this and that and this. Let's get it going, whatever. Bill's like, boy, you are a competitive guy. Tone it down a little. So uh, he didn't have to really say that, but just that little thing. And mm. I appreciated the fact that uh, I also remember when Bill just asked me, you know, tell me about your story. Just like you just did here. Tell me about your story. What did you do before? I was like, wow. You know, guy has all these people, runs this big multi-million dollar business. Just, I'm one of his little chapter guys here. And and very soon after I met him, was running this chapter. It was probably soon after I was having some kind of success, he wanted to know about me a little bit. Right. And so I have used that uh, with you know that's one reason I had a lot of success in my chapter. I really cared about all my members. I really wanted to know all about them. And so yeah, it wasn't a lot of because uh, other than that, the advice from Bill was probably a lot of nuts and bolts. Probably a lot of like here's a strategy to do. Yeah. But getting having lunch with the person 
and uh, getting to know Bill a little bit, that was the big joy. Getting yeah. to know Bill and his wife Karen and his daughter Mara and uh, and that's uh, that to me is the biggest part of it is knowing these people as people and getting that to get that kind of access to people you really got to perform right yeah. if I was an underperforming chapter director or just another member of the, of the of his organization of hundreds of members or probably had a thousand members or whatever of the group like it's not like I'm gonna have dinner with Bill and he's gonna ask me and want to get to know me uh, and so I I do that with my members and 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 people too and I, I just I like to want to get to know people and I think it's a compliment when somebody who is successful just wants to get to know you so yeah. probably didn't answer your question exactly but uh, that was a big confidence booster that Bill wants to know a little bit about me and he yeah. kind of approves he approves at the same time he's going to check that a little bit uh, that meant a lot to me yeah Steve this has been fantastic like last time I really appreciate it thank that's you terrible. so much that's terrible that means you're going to want me to come back again I, I would shave, I, I would actually shirt. you know I'm at home here I don't normally dress like this really <laughs> my wife's like you have pajama bottoms on they'll shave for Jeremy <laughs> I, I actually do <laughs> of course, I actually do. So, I appreciate it, though. I, I would have you back every week. You know, it's... shirt is not tucked in. The sweatpants. I down. mean, there is still tons of questions. I'm not. I'm not going to uh, have you back um, right away. But I mean, I have written down R. H. Donnelly questions about selling yellow oh, page ads and how you did that. We didn't get to that. I mean, anytime. It goes on and on. But I appreciate it. <laughs> Pleasure being here. Thank you so much. Thank you.